All right, so it's been a, a pretty good journey getting here. Um, before I took on this project, I hadn't uh, milled any aluminum. Um, I'd milled a little bit of acrylic, but uh, other than that, just just wood. And I will say for those that have not machined uh, metals on their machine, uh, it is definitely something you should do. It is a fun sense of accomplishment, um, but it's not without its, uh, you know, <laughs> not without its learnings. Uh, these are just some of the remnants of the eighth inch cutters that I've snapped and broken. Um, I've learned a lot along the way, and I think overall I have a, a pretty good product that will uh, hold up better than the plywood pieces. But just, you know, uh, as, a, as a note, if you haven't been watching, all of the aluminum parts were milled out using the uh, half inch plywood uh, plates. So basically there is the X gantry plate, then an adapter plate, and then the print NC um, 300 mil back plate and an extended tram plate that uh, I, I modified from their original design. So in my new design, I'll be replacing the X plate with this plate. So this plate here will mount, um, will replace this one and dr uh, mount directly to the linear bearing blocks. Um, so I did have to drill the side holes um, that attach the ball screw. So um, that plate will be fully replaced. So I will go down to just the three plates um, rather than what it is right now with four, with the X plate, adapter, um, print NC 300 mil, and then the tram plate. So in the new setup, I will just have the new X plate and the 300 mil uh, print NC plate and the extended tram plate. Um, and the extended tram plate just allows the zero, uh, my Z axis to go a little bit lower. Um, and it suits my setup a little bit better. Um, but uh, again, these files are available, but feel free to use the print NC uh, standard tram plate, uh, dual, dual carriage. So this is the uh, dual carriage version, uh, which they have up on their site as well. So over the next little bit, um, I'll probably put the camera on time lapse and I'll be taking apart the uh, Z axis and the X plate and hopefully replacing them uh, with my parts here. Everything uh, seemed to line up quite well uh, with what I had milled. I did print out. Um, I did print out a plate just to see. I think it would work okay if you were not wanting to mill uh, your own plates. I think you could print um, a plates out of a reasonably rigid material. This is just standard PETG, uh, but I think you could use like a, a glass fiber or maybe a carbon fiber reinforced um, version and get reasonable results. Again, I did this all the aluminum milling on plywood at reasonable, reasonable speeds. So there's no reason to think that uh, you wouldn't be able to get uh, decent, um, yeah, decent results out of the printed version. I just ran out of time. I'd kind of like to get my machine up and running. <laughs> and so uh, if Bulkman 3D wants to send me a 750 by 750 Ultimate B for just testing and playing, uh, I'd be happy to continue uh, my work and test out printed plates and stuff. Uh, but right now, like I said, I just need to get my machine up and running and would like to get the new Z-axis uh, set up and working. Uh, so that's my plan is to basically disassemble all of the components and parts from uh, these plates and these parts and move them over to here. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to just see um, is I did all of my um, cam work in Millmage. So Millmage is Lightburn's new CNC software. It's still in release candidate. It's getting close to, to being released, um, but it's still currently free. Um, to play with and to look at. It's, it's not as full featured by any means uh, like uh, Aspire or some of those larger, you know, Fusion 360 or, or some of those larger um, products, but it, it certainly is a, a quite a capable replacement for something like Easel. Um, maybe not Easel Pro. Well, definitely not Easel Pro, but uh, definitely could replace Easel 
and maybe if you're using an old version of Carbide Create. So I think it does have some, some good value and the plans and future enhancements to it, uh, the roadmap for it looks really good. So if you'd like to um, see more about Millmage and kind of the CAM strategies that I used, um, I'm happy to do a video where I just sit in front of the computer and go over Millmage and how I set up uh, these cuts and, and whatnot. But let me know if that's something of interest or if I should just stay in the shop and keep cutting. All right, so with that, I'm going to put the camera on time lapse and start disassembly. We'll see you after it's put back together. So I just want to pause there for a second. Um, that was the piece I was the most worried about. So I had to put that in the vise and um, drill and cut those threads uh, that go into the side plate. So on the Ultimate B, there's three holes um, that mount on that plate. And then that allows the um, ball screw to do its thing. So I was worried that maybe there was an alignment issue or that those weren't going to line up. Um, but so far, so good, and man, I really like the way that plate looks. So I will continue with the rest of the parts and pieces, um, but yeah, I, that was the part I was the most nervous about, um, and so far so good. So we'll get back to the putting everything together. first snag um to double check but it looks like i accidentally milled the pocket uh for the top bearing block here um i milled that too deep um so with that milled too deep this is too far. These are too far apart. Um, still trying to figure out exactly what I did, but basically, yeah, the bearing block or the um, the ball screw, uh, the ball screw retaining piece of the top bearing block. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, the cavity for this it looks like I milled too deep. I'll have to double check what what I did there, but I I goofed something there. Um, meaning that the previous spacers that I had uh, printed to go between these bearing blocks uh, are now too uh, narrow. Um, they're not thick enough. So I'll have to look at that um, and just double check what I did there. Uh, yeah, because the dimensions don't quite match up to what I expected. Um, but I'm going to have to put it on pause. I was hoping to get it done. Um, but I am getting ready to go on vacation. So unfortunately, I probably won't have time to reprint that. So I will probably have to pick it up in about a week um, from this point. So stay tuned for an update um, in the near future. Uh, but yeah, for right now, I'm a little bit stuck. I was quite happy with how everything was looking and lining up uh, up until this point. Uh, all of the screw holes lined up well. Um, yeah, everything looks to be in place. Uh, like I said, the plate to mount on the Ultimate B was really my biggest concern. Um, and that one looks to have gone on just fine. I'm leaving everything a little bit loose right now just to, again, make sure everything fits. And then 
I will figure out the dimension for this spacer block and get that printed when I get back and we'll keep going. Uh, but yeah, overall, I am super happy. I think it looks, I think it looks pretty cool. And I think it will add some functionality for, again, kind of my setup and how I want my machine to run. And I think that's the best part about this is you can mill and make your own parts and uh, customize it to fit your needs. So thanks for watching. And uh, we'll, like I said, be back. I'll be back out here, uh, give or take about a week's time. Um, and we'll keep going. Bye for now.